Assalamu alaikum guys, right now we're raising money for the homeless brothers and sisters in Gaza due to the bombings, they've lost their houses, they need food, they need supplies, they need essentials and there is a team on the ground on behalf of the charity Humanity Care Relief that are distributing aid in the middle of the war zone so please donate as generously as possible at the link below so we can get the aid to those who are in need of it ASAP Okay, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Brothers and sisters, inshallah, the first lecture that I'm going to give for you guys, inshallah, is the story of Nuh alayhi salam. And as I'm sure you're aware, that knowledge con, the theme that we're going through is the lessons from the lives of the prophets. We're not going through the entirety of their story because that would just be borderline impossible. I mean, the stories of the prophets make up a huge portion of the Quran, as it is anyway. So this is not a tafsir of the Qur'an. So by no means are we going to be going into a detailed discussion with regards to the stories and the lives of the prophets. But enough to be able to give us some kind of an understanding with regards to who these men were. So Nuh salam is the first messenger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down to earth. Remember, brothers and sisters, there's a difference between a prophet, a nabi, and a rasul, a messenger. A prophet is a nabi and a rasul is a messenger. And there is a difference between the two. But this is not the place to discuss it. But I, what I will mention to you is that every messenger is a prophet, but not every prophet is a messenger. So the first prophet that came was Adam, but he wasn't a messenger. The first messenger was Nuh alayhi salam. A messenger has a status that is higher. Now there are many messengers, but from the messengers that are the greatest messengers are the five. They're called ulul azmi min al-rusul. The five great messengers. They are Nuh. Alayhi salam, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Never forget, brothers and sisters, you know the names of your soap opera actors, you know the names of your football teams, you know the names of all these people, you know the names of your family members, but these people should be closer to you than even your own family members. Don't ever forget these names, Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Nuh was the first. Now Nuh came after one, uh, he came after 10 Qurun. After 10 Qurun, this word Qarn, I'm going to translate it for you in a second. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Adam Alayhi Salam came and his children for 10 Qarn, 10 Qurun. I'll translate Qurun to you in a second. But there were 10 Qurun, 10 Qurun that the people were upon Tawheed. They worshipped Allah, La ilaha illallah. They didn't come with any shirk. They didn't come with any evil they, uh, in terms of the evil of shirk. They worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were sincere to him in their worship. They didn't worship idols or anything like that. But then after the 10 years, shirk entered. Shirk is the greatest sin. The reason for which a person will not be forgiven. Allah said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive shirk. If you die and you had done other sins, Allah may forgive you. Even if you didn't make tawbah and you were upon tawheed, I wouldn't risk it, I wouldn't risk it, but there's a chance Allah can forgive you. But shirk is the one thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive. These people, inna ladina kafaru bi ayatina sofa nuslihim nara, the ones who die upon shirk, who worship idols, who worship graves, who worship angels, who worship saints, who didn't done shirk, uh, uh, you know, these ta'weez that people have. They think that this will protect them from harm. And they fall into major shirk sometimes with the ta'weezes. And many other elements of shirk from all these different facets and angles. Allah said, Inna Those who disbelieved in our ayat, in our signs. So nuslihim nara. Very soon we're going to burn them in the fire. Kullama nadijat juluduhum baddalnahum juludan ghayra hali yaduqu al-adab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Every single time their skin burns and their skin is burnt off, they will be given more skin so they can feel the pain because if the skin has been burnt, there's no pain. So they get more skin again and again and again to feel the pain because of shit. So this is the most evil sin and it didn't exist for 10 Qurun. 10 Qurun. Now, what is a Qarn? What are these 10 things? Scholars differed. Some scholars said a Qarn is a century, which is true. A, a Qarn can be a century. We are in the 14th century of the Islamic history of the, of the Islamic calendar. Okay, So Qarn can mean century. But Qarn can also mean Jil, which is generation, a generation. So some scholars said this meant 10 centuries, i.e. for 1,000 years people were upon Tawheed. Others said it didn't mean 10 centuries. What it meant was 10 generations. Now a generation is usually less than a century. So this is the two views of the scholars. The point is that the people were upon Tawheed for a very long time. Now, there were five men. Allah mentions them in the Quran. 
وقالوا لا تذرنا الهتكم ولا تذرنا ودا ولا سواعا ولا يغوث ويعوق ونسرا there were five men righteous men whose names that i just mentioned in the verse five men they were righteous men they used to worship allah they used to tell people hey do good don't do bad they used to call them towards goodness but when these men died there was no one left to do their job there was no one left to command the good and to forbid the evil to remind the people so shaytan came and shaytan came to the people and he said hey you know these five men you know these five men why don't you build statues of them so you can remember them and every time you walk past their statue you'll remember the good things that they used to say and this will encourage you to be good that doesn't sound like a bad idea right that doesn't sound like a bad idea and shaytan can come and inspire you without physically coming in front of you so wallahu alam the form in which shaytan came but the point is that shaytan he informed them now they did they listened but they didn't worship him they didn't worship him they didn't worship sorry they didn't worship these statues yet they used the statues for what shaytan said just look at the statue oh, i remember this guy what what is that now but now that he's standing now his statues in front of you you'll remember yeah what was a good guy and what used to tell me you know pray to allah and worship allah and do good and yeah you know what the statue of what is if what's already here so i'm gonna basically you know do good now so it was like that for the first generation. Doesn't sound like a bad idea, right? But this is the issue. This is the issue with shirk and bid'ah. You know, sometimes people don't realize why the religion is so strict on some things. Why is the religion so strict on looking at the opposite gender? I mean, looking is just a look. It's not a fornication, right? But it's what the look will lead to. Why is the religion so strict when it comes to certain financial transactions? Because this transaction will lead to problems later on. Why is the religion so strict with things like not wearing Nike and not wearing, you know, jeans that say true religion, but then they have a Buddha in the back? Well, why? Why? Because these are this is how it starts off, but then eventually it leads them down a very wrong path. Because when that generation died, and then the knowledge was lost the next generation who came shaitan came to him and said hey you know your parents used to come to these idols and make dua when they wanted water when they wanted rain when they wanted things they used to make dua to them and then the idols would aid them in their response so then the people said oh really and then they started praying to the idols and then that's how shirk entered the ummah now when the shirk entered the ummah the people became kuffar the people became kuffar they became mujalimeen they become evildoers but out of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, because Allah did say subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran that Allah is not one. He will punish people hatta until he sends to them a messenger. Allah will send a warning to you. You make a mistake, Allah will give you a chance. Now, by the way, some of you might be thinking, what about us? Don't we have, don't we have prophets to come to us? What about our prophet? I'm saying our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa came. But you say, but he's not here today. I know he's not, but, his, but the scholars are. But what did the scholars have to do with the Prophet? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-ulama warathatul anbiya. The scholars are the inheritors of the Prophets. So when you had the scholars warning you, they are carrying on the job of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So don't think that, oh, okay, I can do whatever I want and Allah is not going to punish me because there's no messenger. No, the messengers come and gone sallallahu alayhi wa and his sunnah still remains and it lives through the teachings of the scholars. So the proof is all around us. For us, as if the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is here, is present, because his teachings are here, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So these people, Allah sent them a messenger, and He sent them Nuh alaihi salam. And when Allah subhanahu wa taala sent them Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa taala sent them Nuh. Allah told Nuh to give that to them, to call them, to reach out to them, and to call them to come to Allah subhanahu wa taala to rectify the affairs, brothers and sisters. No, you see, when we give da'wah, we have people that have been giving da'wah for centuries. We've got stories and examples of scholars, companions, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself and many prophets before him. But can you imagine how lonely the situation was for Nuh alayhi salam? He had no predecessor dealing with what he was dealing with. He didn't have verses like, we, like, like for example, the Prophet alayhi salam in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to him. He, he comforts him by telling him, you're not alone. Prophets before you went through this. For in uh, for, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if they disbelieve in you, فقد كذب, فقد كذب بالبينات, بالبينات Allah said, Oh Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if they disbelieve in you, they disbelieved in prophets before you. It's not, it's not something new. If they disbelieve in you, they've disbelieved before. They have tortured and punished prophets before it's happened. 
And that's comfort there. That's comfort. Can you imagine for Nuh Ali Sam? This is why his story gets to me so much. He was alone. He was a man alone calling his people. And he didn't have a precedent. And he did it for 950 years. Non-stop. 950 years. He was giving them da'wah, reminding them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala captures the da'wah of Nuh alayhi salam very eloquently in some small verses. Allah said that Nuh said, Qala Rabbi inni da'awtu qawbi laylan wa nahara. Nuh says, Allah, my Lord, I have given da'wah to my people. I have called them. I have given da'wah to them laylan wa nahara. I've called them at night and I've called them at day. The da'wah of the prophets always starts at night. It starts in secret. The Prophet alayhi wasalam, also started his da'wah at night. You know, in the Dar al Arqam, he would teach the companions at night. And there's something about the night which is quite profound because the people, the aql is more likely to accept the message. That's why, you know, there's a lot of worship that happens at night. You read Quran at night, you stand in night prayer at night. But the thing is, if you are out there giving da'wah to people at night, are you, what about you? Don't, don't you sleep? You have to sacrifice your sleep and your own personal satisfaction to give da'wah to them. But was it just at night? No. My Lord, I called my people and I gave da'wah to them at night and I gave da'wah to them during the day. But then he said, Allah, every time I gave da'wah to them and I gave more da'wah to them and I tried to tell them, worship Allah alone, don't do shirkin, don't disobey Allah, don't do wrong things. What did they do? They just started to run away. It increased them in running away from me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, He said, Wa inni kullama da'utuhum li taghfira lahum. He said, and every time I would just say to them, Look, why don't you ask Allah to forgive you? Just seek forgiveness from Allah. Stop, stop this wrong that you're doing. Stop these sins. You know this is wrong. Stop this. Li taghfira lahum. What would they do? Ja'alu. Ja'alu asabi'ahum fi abanihim. They would take their fingers and put, look how rude this is. Like, it's not even just a simple, no, I don't want to hear you, no. Imagine you're talking, imagine you're coming out. The man, he's coming out so sincere. He's coming out so sincere, so concerned. He says to you, please, like ask Allah to forgive you, and he will forgive you. And what do you do? You put your fingers in your head. And then they would take their clothing and cover their faces with it. So put their fingers in their ear and take their clothing and wrap their face, cover their faces. And then they would remain persistent on the evil that they were upon and become arrogant. But did that make no stop? Imagine people are running away you're, you're, night and day. Then they're running away from you. You're going after them. You're chasing after them. Not in a, a, a stalkerish kind of way, but out of concern. See, you left me. I was just telling you to worship Allah alone. I wasn't telling you anything wrong. I was just trying to advise you to do good. And you left me. Look, just ask Allah to forgive you, he'll forgive you. And then they put their fingers in their ears. And then they cover their faces. And then they remain persistent. And then they become arrogant. But does that make him stop? No. He said, Thumma, after that, Inni da'utuhum jihara. When someone puts their fingers in their ears and they stop listening, what happens? You become loud. He said, Thumma, Inni da'utuhum jihara. Inni a'lantu lahum. He said, I announced to them. You come loud, speak loud. Why are you not listening, oh people? You're going to burn in the hellfire if you don't listen. Allah has a paradise waiting for you. So he reaches out to them. But he didn't shout all the time. He didn't raise his voice all the time. He didn't announce. He said, and even, I came to them in secret. I was quiet. I listen, please. Why are you not listening? He said, I tried everything. He tried everything. And what was his da'wah? Was it a da'wah which was raw? Was it a da'wah which was tough? You know, what was, what, what, what was, he, what was he saying to them? All he was saying to them was, Just ask Allah to forgive you. He'll forgive you. He's merciful and he's forgiving. And then Allah will send down rain to you and he'll give you gardens. He'll give you wealth and he'll give you children. If you have children, it means you have wives. Like Allah will give you a good life. Allah will take care of you. Just, just worship him. Oh, that, that was his message. That was his message. And he tried to give them warnings. He said, Inni akhafu alaykum. He said, I'm scared for your day when the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, 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 the day when the punishment is mighty. And he came to them in a way where uh, you know, it was it was soft trying to give them hope and trying to give them mercy. Wallah, he debated with them. He tried to use reason with them. Nuh alayhi salam. Alam alam taro kaifa khalaq Allah sab'a samawatin tibaqa wa ja'al al-qamra fihinna nooran wa ja'al al-shamsa siraja. 
والله انبتكم من الارض نباتا ثم يعيدكم فيها ويخرجكم اخراجا ويخرجكم في ثم يعيدكم فيها ويخرجكم اخراجا he just he debated he tried every method with them he was calm with them they were rude to him they insulted him they would come to him and they would call him uh, misguided they would say he's a liar look how he would respond he would say ya qawmi he said oh my people he said ليس لي بضلالة ولكن رسول من رب العالمين he said I'm, you can't you keep telling me I'm misguided I'm not misguided I'm not misguided I, I'm just a messenger sent from Allah you shoot the messenger I'm just bringing you a message from your Lord they would insult him they would be rude to him they would try to oppress him in many ways yet Nuh alayhi salam he remained consistent and he remained patient and he tried everything that he could do to make them listen but they rejected what were the reasons why they rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran many reasons why they rejected the scholars mentioned that there were eight arguments that they gave there were eight reasons why they said no we're not going to believe in you I won't mention the verses to you just to save time but I'll just mention what the points are and you can refer back to the verses in your own time the first reason why they rejected him they rejected him because they said you are a human being just like us why are we going to follow you you're like us you're a human being we're the same the second reason is they said, look at your followers. Your followers are these what, low people? <laughs> look at the people that you got following. These are your followers? These are the low people that are following? No, no, we're upper class. We're high. We're you know, above these people. Okay? Number three, they said, you're not special. You know, when you start practicing Chagis Dao, they said, well, you're not special. You think, what, do you, what do you think you are? You think you're righteous? You think you're better than me? You're not better than me. That's what they said too. Notice, these are the same things that we hear to today. Okay? Number four, the fourth thing, they said, you're a liar. We don't even believe you. You, you claim you're a prophet. You're a liar. You know, today people give da'wah to Tawheed, to Sunnah, to Salafi. We say, you're a liar. You made this up. This is, you guys made this up. This is all coming from you. Okay? Uh, the fifth thing, they said, you're misguided. Misguided. He's misguided. He's, he's gone astray. Okay? He's been listening. He's become extreme. You know? Oh, he's, he's, he's gone a bit cuckoo in the head. Number six. They said, okay. Tell Allah to send out an angel. Tell Allah to send an angel. Today when you speak to atheists, they say, oh, tell Allah, show him to me. Tell Allah, show him us. Tell Allah, speak to me directly. You know, they're asking for some kind of a supernatural event like that. Okay? Um, the seventh thing, they said, this is new. Our forefathers never heard of this. Today you come to people and you say, hey, 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 look. You have to follow the Quran, Sunnah, the Sahaba of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, the Tabitin, that's how you understand your religion. You say, hey, you brought something new. This is new. My parents never told me this. My, my grandparents never told me this. I said, bro, bro, this is not new, this is old. Just because you haven't heard it, just because you haven't heard it doesn't mean it's new. It's not, it's not new, it's been there. But what do they say? They said, no, 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 we, my, my mom never told me this. My dad never told me this. My people, my people don't do this. That's the excuse they use. And the eighth thing, which is their special thing that they always like to say, you're crazy. He's crazy. No, you are crazy. And these are the reasons why they... D didn't believe in Nuh and you know what in between people come with intellectual arguments and they try to flavor it up with this and that and quotes here and there and try to you know sound all smart and some people the kuffar will try to bring you their arguments why they don't believe and the even innovators will bring you their arguments why they don't believe and even the sinners will bring you arguments why they don't want to listen but you know what it will come down to at the end of the day is that they just don't want to accept the truth what it will come down to at the end of the day is one of these eight things it will always come down to one of these eight things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ma yuqalu laka illa ma qad qila lil rusuli min qablik Allah said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they are not saying to you O Muhammad except what they have already said to the messengers that came before you I mean this is not new and anyone who takes the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give da'wah it's not going to be new it, they're going to hear the same thing regurgitated sometimes it will be in a different way but really the point is going to come down to be in exactly the same. So now, a question. What was the miracle of Nuh alayhi salam? Can we put the chat on for a second, Abu Bakr? I would like to see if the people know what the miracle of Nuh alayhi salam was. Well, give me one second. Yeah, I just want to see if they know what the miracle of Nuh was. Allah sent his prophets with the miracle, right? What was the miracle of Nuh? Get some interaction going for like a few seconds and then we'll go back. Yes. Yeah. You guys are watching, if you refresh the page, the chat is now live. So if you would like to answer the question, then please only answer the question. Nothing um, unrelated to the question. Someone said ark. The can arc. you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, no, the ark was not the miracle. 
The arc, the arc, the arc, the book. Nope, 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 nope. The arc was not the miracle. But I appreciate you guys contributing. Everyone's saying the arc. Uh, someone said, I have no idea. You built a tremendous ship. Is the arc. No. <laughs> the boat. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Long life. Nope, 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 nope. This was not his miracle, Ali, his salam. If anyone gets this right now, I'll give them free access to the Muslim Survival Guide, which is our online Islamic studies program. We have a few spaces left before the next class starts in January. It's £500 for the whole year. I will give it free if you give me the right answer. The flood, the flood. He lived the longest. Nope, 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 nope. Animals, nope. He made a dua for the disbelievers. I wiped off the land. Nope, 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 nope. Old, nope. His patience with the boat ended up. Nope. Long life, having age. Nope. Um, Amina, what do you mean surviving? What do you mean by surviving? Amina, what do you mean by surviving? No, 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 <laughs> Barakallahu. Says the Amal. Did she respond, Abu Bakr? Can you see her response? Yeah, she said, "Survive the flood." No, no, no. So I guess that that's a hint that it's something along the lines of surviving. The mm. fact that you pointed her out. Uh, Abu Abdurrahman Al Haqiri said he survived being alone. No, sorry. Okay, that's it, guys. Sorry, man. Um, everyone's now just trying to throw the word survive in there somewhere. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, ready? Okay, you can turn the chat off, Booker. Okay. You can turn the chat off. Is it off? Yeah, it's off. His miracle. Guys, this shows the importance of learning the prophets. You can tell me right now how much, you know, kuffar let Messi earn a week. And you can tell me, you know, what the latest influencers are doing, what the new trend is. But this is not just... We, should, we can't make an excuse for not knowing prophets in general, but this is from the five greatest messengers. If we don't know him... What do we know? Do you understand? This is, this is serious stuff. So, Nuh, when his people became frustrated with him, he made a challenge to them. He challenged them. Allah said, What to Ali him never a Nuhin if call a liko me ya com. Nuh, he said to his people. In Kana Kabura Ali Kumakami. He said, if me being with you is difficult for you, if it's very hard for you to put up with me and to tolerate me. And you can't, and you're fed up and you can't really take these reminders that I'm giving you and these ayat and just, just these rem reminders of Allah that I'm giving you. He said, he said, in that case, if you're fed up with me, then I am completely relying upon Allah. I'm going to rely on Allah. And then this is a challenge. He said, amrakum. He said, all of you come together. All of you, don't leave one out. Don't, don't leave out one man. Every single one of you, man, woman, old, young, disabled, able, everyone come together. Every one of you. Okay, come together. akum and bring all. Go, go, go to your gods that you worship, and go, to, go to your idols that you call on for besides help. Go, go get anything and everything that you call upon besides Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You all come and bring all of your gods. Thumma amrukum alaykum and then plot, 
plot a plan against me. And don't do it in secret. Don't do this plotting and planning at night. Do it in the day when I'm right in front of you. Make it bait. Make, don't, don't be sneaky about it. Come, all of you, come together and your idols and make a plot and plot against me. And then execute your plot. Do whatever you want to do to me, basically. Come, to, come at me, come at me. Do whatever you want. Try it. What do you want to do? Hang me? What do you want to do? Stone me? What do you do? Just, just do it. Just do it. Well, that's on the own. And don't wait. What are you waiting for? Don't wait. Don't do it next year, next week. Do it now. All of you, come together. Five things. Look what he said. Come together, all of you. All of you. Don't leave one man out. Number two. Would it not be beneficial for, that, for him if one man is out? Would it not be beneficial if they don't agree? He said, no, no, agree. Come together, all of you. Then bring all of your idols. Go ask help from whoever you want. And number three, what? Don't do it in secret. Do it out in the open. I'm allowing you. Make this public knowledge. Number four, and do it. Just come. Throw at me what you have. And number five, don't wait. Don't wait. Look at this. This can't come from someone except that. Look at what he said earlier. He said, He said, Upon Allah, I have relied. This is a statement coming from complete reliance and conviction, Allah, that whatever these people do, they will not be able to harm me. Whatever, come, all of you, the whole city, the whole nation, come at me. You cannot harm me. You cannot harm me. And guess what? They couldn't. And the scholars mentioned this was the miracle of Nuh. This was the miracle of Nuh, alayhi salam, that no matter what happened, they, 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 they could not harm him. They couldn't get close to him to harm him. And Hud has a similar, similar miracle, which I think, inshallah, Sheikh Abdul Ahad is going to discuss with you guys in more detail. But the point is that this was the miracle of Nuh. He said, try. We learn a valuable lesson here, my brothers and sisters. If there's anyone who relies upon Allah, Allah will not forsake them. Allah will not forsake them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forsake them. Do you understand? Allah will not forsake them. Anyways, they couldn't harm him physically, but they harmed him through their words. You know, they say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not true. Words hurt. Sometimes words can hurt deeper than sticks. So they couldn't harm him physically, and that was his miracle, but they harmed him. They hurt him. They used to mock him. They used to mock him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Sakhiru minhu. Allah told him to start to build the ship. We're jumping ahead now of the story. But Allah told him to build the ship, to build the ark. And every time he was building the ark, they would mock him. They would just go past. Ah, you know, look at you. Look at you, look what you did. They would mock him for two reasons. The first reason they would mock him is because they, they would say, you used to be a carpenter. Now you're a prophet. You know how they say to you now, oh, you used to be on the streets of us. Now you're all righteous. Oh, I know what you was on, and now you're all right. So they say, oh, you're a carpenter. Oh, he's a prophet now. He's a prophet now. Look at him. Ah. The second thing they would say is they would say, no, are you okay? A ship for the sea. But we're on land. <laughs> There's a ship on the sea, and you're building on land. <laughs> they say, look, look, guys, I told you, you lost it. You lost it. So they would mock like that. But remember something, brothers and sisters. You see these criminals? They laugh at us in this life. They laugh at the believers in this life. The kuffar laugh at the believers and the innovators laugh at Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And the sinners laugh at those who are obedient. Oh, look at him. Look at him lowering his gaze. Can't even hang around with a girl. Look, look at him. Salaf. Salaf. Oh, the Sahaba. Oh, most of all the Sahaba. Living back in the days. Huh? Living back in the days. All oh, the kuffar. Look at us. We're all modern. And these guys are still following the religion from 1400 years ago. Mock, they mock, they mock, they do whatever it is that they want. And they make jokes and they make memes and they make videos and you know they 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 they, they draw cartoons of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But don't worry, because Allah said, min al kuffar that a day will come when the believers will have the last laugh. Literally, literally, يضحكون. they will laugh at the disbelievers <laughs> when you're in paradise, on your couches. Looking on your couch, just sitting on the couch, chilling, you've got your drinks there. You know what I'm saying? Paradise. Mashing it out. <laughs> Look at the camera. You know what I'm saying? And they are deserving of it. 
they deserve al jaza min jins al amal you are recompensed with what you did when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told nuh alayhi salam that people are not going to believe in you apart from who has already believed allah said wa ma amana ma'ahu illa qalil allah said nuh 900 brothers says don't 950 years night and day public private 950 years of them running away 950 years of them threatening to stone him 950 years of them lying mocking him insulting him 950 years of all of this 950 years and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him wa ma amana ma'ahu illa qalil allah said that they didn't believe with him except a very few amount of people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had informed him, he said, he said, he said to him, he said, No, no one else is gonna believe in you. Apart from those who believe, no one else is gonna believe in you. No one else, Nuh, is gonna believe in you apart from those who have already believed in you. So then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this, and Nuh realized no one's gonna believe anymore. We don't know exactly how many people believe. In Nuh, but we know as Allah said, Qalil, very little. The Israeliyat, the people of the book, their scriptures mention about 80 people believed in Nuh over 950 years. So we don't affirm or negate what they mentioned, but if what they, but, but, but taking that number in mind to give you some context, 80 people got across 950 years is like, is like one, is, 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 is like, um, Something like 10 people or something like that every 80 years. Every 80 years, it's like 10 or 11 people accepted your da'wah. That's it. Every 10 years, one person listens to you. Less, less, less than one person listening to you every 10 years. Less than one person listening to you every 10 years. So you can imagine, you can imagine how hard it is, right? That you're not seeing results. And that should show you, brothers, says da'wah is not about results. Can you say Nuh was a failure because people didn't believe in him? No. Our job is not to make people believe. That's why we shouldn't bend the religion just to make people listen. Let me, you know, make the religion easy so people will accept it. Allah already said, يُرِيدُ Allah أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ Allah has already made the religion easy for you. يُرِيدُ Allah بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah has already made the religion easy for you. It's not hard. The religion is easy. So you don't have to make it any easier for people. They don't want to listen. That's up to them. Your job is to convey the message, whether it seems harsh or wrong or whatever. I mean, of course, you do it with wisdom and you do it with knowledge and mercy and, and, and forbearance. You put it the right message in the right place and whatever have you. You do it with hikmah. But the point is, at the end of the day, your job is to convey the message. Your job is to convey the message. We have not been sent here to enforce it on, on the people. That's not our job. It's just to convey. So no, it wasn't a failure. He conveyed. They didn't listen. That was their, that was their problem. So when he realized that no one else is going to listen, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nuh, he made a dua to Allah. When he realized no one else is going to listen to me, Nuh made a dua. He said, uh, And then he goes on to say, he said, Rabbi la tadar ala al-ardi min al-kafirina dayyar. He said, Allah, do not live. Do not live. Do not leave on the earth any more kuffar. Don't leave on the earth any kuffar. Allah, destroy them all. Destroy them. They're not going to give back to anyone except for more kuffar. Look, Allah already told them they're not going to believe. So they're not going to believe, then it means they're going to live, and then they're going to live, and they're going to give birth to more kuffar, and their kuffar are going to give birth to more kuffar, and their kuffar are going to give birth to more kuffar, and they're going to be kuffar and fujjah, they're going to be disbelievers, and they are going to be a fitna for the ones who were believers. So Allah said, he said, Allah, just destroy them all. If they're not going to believe, if they're not going to believe, and they're going to go hell anyway, Allah just wipe them off the face of the planet. Wipe them off the face of the planet. كَذَّبَتْ قَبَلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحِ فَكَذَّبُوا عَبَدَنَا وَقَالُوا مَجْنُونٌ وَزْدُجِرْ They call him crazy, they call him insane. فَدَعَى رَبَّهُ نُوحِ made dua to Allah أَنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ فَانْتَصِرْ He said, my Lord, I have been overcome. I have been overcome. Ya Allah, I have been overcome. فَانْتَصِرْ Help me. إِنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ They've overcome me, Ya Allah. فَانْتَصِرْ Help me. Pay attention. When Nuh made this dua for help, when he realized no one else is going to believe and he's stuck now and they're not going to listen. He called out to Allah. He said, Inni maghlubun fantasir. How many words did he say? Inni maghlubun fantasir. Inni 
inni, verily I, maghlubun, am overcome, fantastic. If you want to make inni, which is the particle on its own, and the, the pronoun, which is him talking about me, maghlubun, fantastic. Is a four, maximum, he said four, he said four things. He said four things. Inni maghlubun fantasif. How many things did he say? Four things. What did Allah do? Allah said, فَفَتَحْنَا أَبَوَابَ السَّمَاءِ Allah said, we opened for him the, the door of the sky. بِمَاءٍ munhamir, And we sent down rain. وَفَجَّرْنَا الْأَرْضَ عُيُونًا فَالْتَقَ الْمَاءِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the earth to burst forth its springs so the water will come out of the earth and the water will come down from the sky. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the rain out to destroy the people of Nuh. But pay attention, Nuh was, this is my point, Nuh was in, in trouble. He was stuck. How soon did Allah's help come? The whole time if he made dua, Allah would have accepted it. Allah would have destroyed him if he asked earlier. The dua of the Prophet is not rejected. 950 years he waited out of mercy. He waited to see, can there be guidance? When he was clear, Allah told him, listen, no, they're not going to believe in you. No one else is going to believe. There's no point anymore. So they say, Rabbi, inni maghloobun fantasif. He said, inni maghloobun fantasif. My Lord, I have been overcome. Give me victory. How, did, how long did it take for the victory? Fatahna alayhim abawab as sama. Allah sent the victory down. Me and you were struggling. Some of us are sick and financially struggling. And some of us are struggling in our da'wah. And we're struggling in many ways, shapes, and forms. And we call out to Allah for help. And sometimes the response doesn't come. Why? 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 Why doesn't it come? Maybe our tawheed is weak. Maybe our reliance upon Allah is weak. Remember, Nuh had a strong reliance upon Allah. You see, Nuh, his da'wah was a da'wah of tawheed. When you look at the story of Nuh, you don't know anything else other than the shit came because uh, at his time because of his people. That he, the people he was sent to and then he called them to Eid he said Malakum ilahin there's no other God for you to worship except for Allah that was his whole mission La ilaha illallah they don't know anything else about him the story of Musa has many stories Ibrahim there's many stories the Prophet has many stories Isa has many stories Isa there's just one uh, no there's just one just no to Eid that's it there's not really stories like that it's just to Eid he came to teach to Eid and the different dialogues he had with people to try to convey that point to them okay this happened okay and this shows you he was a man of Tawheed. So he is calling to Tawheed. He himself was strong. So then Dua is, its essence is Tawheed. So because he knew Tawheed, when he called out to Allah, Inni maghlubun fantasif. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, please don't take this what I'm about to say. Like, if you study Tawheed, and you learn Tawheed, and you implement Tawheed, and you live by it, Wallahi, you are a person that when you call out to Allah, He responds. He responds. Wallahi, you become a person when you call out to Allah, he responds. Because Tawheed is all about your connection to Allah. The stronger and sharper your Tawheed, the stronger your connection to Allah. The more your Tawheed, the more beloved you are to Allah, the closer you are to Allah. And then Allah responds. And inshallah, for those of you that are wondering, where can I study Tawheed? Inshallah, when I have my session with you later, I'll talk to you about where you can learn Tawheed. We have a program where we're going to be going through Kitab at Tawheed, which is 67 odd chapters just about La ilaha illallah, just about Tawheed from different angles, which is what Nuh came with and the, all the prophets came with. And I'll talk to you more about that in the session I'm going to do with you later, which is about 8.15. Back to the story of Nuh alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent down the rain and what happened? The sky, it rained down on them. So when this happened and then the water started to rain, 